Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Underdog MLB, and today I'm going to be making a bit of a bold prediction for the 2020 season. Now, obviously, the start of the season is a bit of an unknown. Opening day has been delayed until at least the middle of May, but it probably won't happen until June, as the Blue Jays GM says that he thinks the players will need another month of training before the regular season. Because of that, it's going to be almost impossible for MLB to fit in a full 162 games in this year, but they are going to try to fit in as many as they can. This is going to make for two major differences to this season. The first one is that most likely there are going to be fewer days off and more doubleheaders, which will test the depth of teams more than we've really seen in the past. And secondly, with fewer games on the schedule, it gives more of a chance for a mediocre team to go on a hot streak and make some noise down the stretch. I started thinking about what teams had a chance to surprise some people, and I came up with the Miami Marlins. Yes, the Marlins, the team that hasn't had a season above 500 in a full decade and hasn't reached the playoffs since 2003. The Marlins have been on a steady decline for the past few years and won all of 57 games in 2019, so why on earth could they possibly make the jump to 500? Well, the Marlins have actually made a lot of under the radar moves for pretty good players and I'm going to break down their roster right now. Behind the plate, the Marlins have Francisco Cervelli and Jorge Alfaro. Cervelli has a career 101 OPS plus, which means he is around league average in the hitting department, which is pretty good for being a catcher. His stats did take a dip last year, but he is one year removed from having an 809 OPS and is a pretty good defensive catcher as well. Jorge Alfaro should also platoon with him, and I think he is a very underappreciated player. He also is about league average range in hitting, though he doesn't have the defensive skills Cervelli does. The catching duo of Cervelli and Alfaro is definitely one of the better pairs in the league. The infield might be the Marlins' biggest strength, starting with Jesus Aguilar at first, who's just a year removed from his monster 2018 season where he hit 35 homers and received MVP votes. If he regains that form, the Marlins have a huge bat to anchor their lineup. Isan Diaz, a former top 10 prospect within the Marlins organization, made his debut late last season, which was pretty underwhelming, but he has the potential to turn it around. If he doesn't, the Marlins have Miguel Rojas, who usually hits for a high average and plays good defense. Jonathan Villar is another one of the underrated players that the Marlins picked up. He's very fast and capable of having pretty good offensive seasons, although his defense does leave a lot to be desired. However, he should be a great addition to Miami's lineup as shortstop. Brian Anderson has been the Marlins' best offensive player the last two seasons, posting above average offensive seasons both years. Advanced metrics disagree about whether he's a great or average fielder, but he's definitely a good player who should help the Marlins a lot in 2020. The Marlins also have Garrett Cooper, who I wouldn't expect to be starting, but he did have an above average offensive season last year and would be a nice bench bat. In the outfield is where we might start to see the signs of weakness on this Marlins team. Matt Joyce is entering his age 35 season, but is an above average career hitter and topped out at 25 homers back in 2017. His defense is pretty average, but he still should be a positive player for the team. Corey Dickerson might be the best player on the Marlins in 2020, as he's been an above average hitter for the last 6 years and has also won a gold glove. As long as he plays like he has for the last few years, he should help the team big time. The third outfield spot is really up for grags, with Lewis Brinson being the most probable candidate, but after two very disappointing offensive seasons, it probably makes sense to look at some other options as well. The Marlins have two outfield prospects who should be ready for the big leagues this year. Jesus Sanchez is the number 80 prospect in the MLB, and Monte Harrison is the Marlins' number 9 prospect. It will be interesting to see if either of them makes a significant contribution in 2020. Another option is the veteran Matt Kemp, who was signed on a minor league contract and was an all-star two years ago. He could potentially have a bounce back year and really help the team. So there you have the Marlins lineup, and in my opinion, it's really not bad. If you take a close look at the players there, if they all perform even close to what they're capable of, this team should make some noise. The starting lineup that I'm showing here is projected by baseball reference to have a combined 768 OPS, which is a little higher than the 2019 MLB average of 758. Now this lineup is definitely capable of carrying its weight, 
but the pitching staff is not quite as strong. However, it is still probably better than you would think. In the starting rotation, Miami's top two is Sandy Alcantara and Caleb Smith. They obviously aren't your typical aces, but Alcantara has always been a bit above average, and Smith had a great first half of 2019 before declining in the second half. Jose Urania was good in 2017 and 18 before falling off last year, and if he gets back to that form that he had before 2019, he could be a great help to Miami's rotation. Pablo Lopez, Jordan Yamamoto, and Eliezer Hernandez all have the potential to be good back of the rotation starters. Now this rotation doesn't look very impressive, but the big piece of the rotation here is top prospect Sixto Sanchez. The number 22 prospect in baseball features the potential to be an elite starter in the MLB, and is projected to be ready to get called up in 2020. If he gets promoted and performs even close to the level that he's capable of, he should seriously help the Marlins get to the 500 mark. In the bullpen, the Marlins have a few pretty solid arms. Their projected closer is Drew Steckenrider, who had a rough 2019 of foregoing down with injury but has a lot of talent. They also have a big arm in Ryan Stanek, a proven veteran in Brandon Kinsler, and a guy with great break in Yimmy Garcia. Sterling Sharp has been an above average pitcher in the minors, but is only advanced as far as double A, so we'll see how he does in the big leagues. Adam Conley has been with the Marlins for a while as a lefty reliever, but he had a rough year last year and I don't know how much he'll be utilized this year. Steven Tarpley, Jeff Brigham, Robert Duggar, and of course the switch pitcher Pat Venditti are depth options for the bullpen as well. The Marlins also have some prospects that MLB Pipeline estimates could end up in the bullpen by the end of the year. Edward Cabrera and Jorge Guzman both have elite fastballs, and righty Nick Niedert also looks like he could contribute as well. All three could be used as starters if the rotation needs more help, but I think the Marlins can find the right combination of guys to create a decent bullpen behind the top four arms. So there you have it, that is a quick rundown of the 2020 Marlins outlook. They have a lot of depth options and prospects that they can try and out and find the right mix of guys to win enough games to get to 500. A lot of teams are relying on their star players to carry them, but the Marlins have lots of backup options and prospects to go to if their starters get injured or don't perform. If they get a couple of things to go their way or get on a hot streak, they could make things interesting down the stretch. And remember, if the Marlins do end up a 500 team, you heard it here first. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot of videos that I'm hoping to make while we're all in quarantine, so make sure to stay tuned, and I'll see you guys in the next one.